Okay, so my breakfast has changed a bit. I've cut down on the oats and dried fruit. I've really whacked up the berries. So the net result of that is the calories is down, but the volume's still about the same, so I don't feel hard done by. Got my grand flax seeds and my bran rush protein powder as normal. Cooking it with water, so I'm not drinking my calories, if you get me. The same to maximize the feeling of satiation. Would satiety have been a better word, actually? I've added a little pinch of each of these suckers just to spice up my life. Now we'll do a fancy Instagram style topping. I'm just making some food. He's just making some food. So I added some citrus zest onto the top of my porridge. Got chia seeds, a couple of berries, a little cinnamon. Found these really strong D3s. I have two a week, might be a little too much for some people, but um, some strength trainers actually recommend that they're like bigger like heavyweight athletes take one of those a day but it is fat soluble so um it would be toxic if you get it wrong quick bit of editing we're going to go and walk some dogs for Gemma's job go and nip to the dentist just to get a check up each and uh, tonight gary francione lecture at the uea just across the road of all places in the world meal two nice big salad i've got turmeric cooked quinoa got some walnuts in there uh, I've dressed it with apple cider vinegar and added some black pepper and some chili flakes with a couple of satsumas as well. Tess is here. Hey Tess. So I just went to the dentist and we've got, we've got a new dentist now. Me and Jem go to the same one. And um, the first thing was he noticed my t-shirt and he just said, oh, what's that all about then? So I told him the premise of... <laughs> Telling the premise of Hench Herbivore and veganism, baby. And uh, so his name was Joseph, he was really lovely. And then the nurse, I think she said her name was Emily. I hope I haven't got that wrong. They might be watching. They said they're going to check out the channel. <laughs> they were really, really nice people and they were really interested about the vegan thing. Yep. And they were just surprised again at the whole, you know, that veganism can support like athleticism and muscle right. building. Okay. Uh, so yeah, some people just still, most people don't know, do they? Like we've been in this game so long, yeah. like it sort of surprises me, but you just have to keep trying to educate everyone. Yeah. And uh, no one wants to hurt animals, do they? No one wants to actually hurt an animal. So people find out that it's not normal, natural or necessary. And there is another way which leads to not getting heart disease and cancer, most probably, diabetes and things. They'll probably do it. He's training for um, one of the sort of obstacle races. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. yeah, they both seem really interested, really so lovely people. I, I was just sitting in the waiting room and I heard Paul saying something about, oh yes, all of my YouTube, you know, the I train with Mr. Universe, but, you know, some things that he would often remark and you know, tell people. And I just laughed at myself out loud because I thought, uh, oh, he's at it again. He talks <laughs> to everybody, he doesn't care who they are, he just gets onto the topic, you know. <laughs> That wasn't just, my fault. Well, they, that yeah. was, so there you go, that's some t-shirt activism. Yeah. So, it does does the activism for you. Brilliant. Buy a t-shirt, folks, link in the description. So now I've got a ton of veggies. I've got leeks, cauliflower, broccoli, and mushrooms in there. Technically, mushrooms are a fungi, not a vegetable, but you know what I mean. Got the old quinoa again. This time it's hot, though. Got a Brazil nut, so the fat will aid uh, the nutrient absorption and give me some uh, selenium. And I've got these beans and some sauce, a little bit of hot sauce. One of the few places for someone like retired wilderness planner David, whose name and former occupation have been made up, can discuss the shame of carnism. It's very cruel for youngsters today to ask, why did these people do what they did? We couldn't have known that we were active participants in the slave trade because the language of the time suggested we were just eating our dinner. So we're just watching Carnage for the second time. It's absolutely brilliant. I suggest you all check it out on BBC iPlayer. It's the first thing that pops up. Brilliant piece of uh, clever sort of activism, mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah. It's, like, it's a comedy and it's hilarious. And I think it will show Carnists that, you know, their hypocrisy. But it's in such a way, because it's comedy and it's delivered in that way, it won't, like, they won't be so guarded, like... I think that they'll be able to sort of see it. It's sort of just ludicrous enough, like a bit silly in places that, mm. you know, you don't know if to take it seriously, but then it does tell you the true facts, but in such a way that it's non, 
sort of confrontational really I suppose they've been done that very cleverly yeah yeah it appeals to all yeah it doesn't look like activism does it, it just looks like no, a laugh but it definitely is activism yeah mm. some of the cleverest activism I've ever ever seen mm. yeah give it a look just done my rollouts I'm just gonna carb CTFU and then we're gonna go and see Gary Francione over the road at the UEA I haven't got time for a full meal so I thought some fast sugar and then I'll have the rest of my meal later on. See how that works. Ben's here with his snazzy top on. He's got a nice top. But in all seriousness, our next speaker is one who it is a, a great pleasure to invite to speak. This is also his first outing with a UEA hat on. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to welcome Gary Francioni, who is an honorary uh, professor. He's going to take us into the area of thinking about philosophy in relation to non-humans, philosophy and non-human animals. Gary. I want to make an observation and a comment. Yes, there are two Italians on the panel. He put us last. <laughs> the comment I want to make is I didn't vote for him. Do not blame me. <laughs> I think we are facing a catastrophe, a real catastrophe, of both the physical and the spiritual and moral, whatever you want to say, sort. Things are very, very bad. And it troubles me that I think philosophers have fallen down. The area of philosophy that I think we should be focusing on most, normative ethics, is, is oftentimes the, 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 the area of philosophy which is sort of pushed aside in the department. But I'm going to urge you to end by joining with me in thanking our four very excellent panelists here this evening. Oh, is that me? Oh, what's that? Come on, Wow, this is a nice spread. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Hello. 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 My head. Yeah, I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Hello. How are you? How are you guys doing? You're in my bloggy vlog. Good, a bit of pineapple meat. Yeah, Did you find everything you were burgling for? <laughs> How good was that? I mean, the other three lecturers went right over my head because I don't really know anything about philosophy. Yeah. And I know, like, Gary has his detractors, but I don't think anyone could argue with that. So the talk was called The Futures of Philosophy. And what Gary is saying is philosophers need to get out there, be proactive because there is no future if we don't act now. Yeah, and he's he basically... Talked about the environment, didn't he? Like, and yeah, so he's saying basically philosophers should be the ones going out teaching people how to think clearly so they know what's going on and know what to do about it. And there's no argument that, well there is an argument but it's wrong, that animal agriculture is the number one cause of environmental destruction. He talked about animals being sentient beings and whether you argue or not how much they can think, they can still, they still have desires, they can still feel yeah. pain. And, and just basically, suffer, basically the premise is no one wants to cause unnecessary suffering to an animal and even the American government, the number one uh, disseminators of disinformation, they're not saying we need to eat animals to be healthy or animal mm -hmm. products. So therefore, if you follow that logical train of thought, that philosophy, we shouldn't be eating animals. Yeah. Eat this. Yeah. <laughs> I had to do it very quickly. Yes. I lost time. Go vegan, stay vegan forever. <laughs> Late back from the Gary thing, so we'll just grab these stir fry packs with some beans. Last meal. Uh, I'm not allowed too many carbs because I had a bit of fruit earlier, but I've got all this food. Look at all this food. The beauty of whole foods, plant-based, vegan eating is you can eat a ton of food, even on a diet. How cool is that, Gemma? Yeah, very cool. It's the way forward. So I've got two packs of um, veggies here, which is 600 grams. I've got a can of beans and I cooked it with chilli and soy sauce. Oh, and ginger. A bit of ginger. Mm. It's delicious.
Oh, I signed off earlier. Well, watch this. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Go vegan for victory. Yeah.